Hello and welcome back to another video from the McMaster University Demystifying Medicine YouTube channel. My name is Amir and today we are going to delve into the world of psychedelics and their potential for treating mental illnesses. Now many of you might have heard of psychedelics, but what is exactly considered a psychedelic compound? Well, a quick Google search tells you that psychedelic drugs or simply psychedelics are a class of compounds that when consumed produce an altered state of consciousness along with thought, visual and auditory changes. But first, let's start with a brief history. According to multiple archaeological and historical studies, humans' use of mind-altering substances dates back to prehistory. Early humans consumed plants or mushrooms that contained natural psychoactive compounds during religious, medical, or secular practices. Given the strong hallucinogenic effects of these substances, particularly their ability to generate vivid images, scientists believe that psychedelics were utilized as a tool which facilitated the advancement of our cognitive capacity and our symbolic culture throughout the humankind history. The modern era of psychedelic research was initiated when a Swiss chemist named Albert Hoffman discovered the potent psychoactive and hallucinogenic properties of lysergic acid diethyl amide, also known as LSD, in 1943. After several years of research in Europe, LSD was brought into the United States by two American psychiatrists named Max Rinkel and Nick Bursell who conducted several studies on this interesting compound. In the following years, dozens and dozens of studies showed promising results of psychedelics' ability to alleviate widespread mental disorders such as anxiety, addiction, and depression, which had proven to be treatment-resistant at those times. However, it is worth mentioning that many of these scientific studies had very small sample sizes, and they did not meet the methodological standard that are accepted today. During the 1960s, however, the general public was concerned about the illegal distribution and use of LSD, which led to a total crackdown. Many countries, including the United States, passed legislation such as the Controlled Substances Act of 1970, which put LSD and other psychedelics in Schedule 1 category, effectively stopping all scientific research surrounding these compounds. In the 1990s, new wave of psychological studies started to reinvestigate the therapeutic properties of psychedelics. This contributed to an increase in clinical research centering on the psychopharmacological effects of these drugs, some of which we will discuss in detail in this video. Treatment using psychedelics is usually conducted by one of the two main methods. The first one is called psycholytic therapy and it involves administration of low or medium doses of the drug every one to two weeks for a prolonged period of time. The ultimate goal here is to encourage the participant to relieve his or her memories which are filtered through conventional psychotherapy techniques aided by the effects of the drug. The second method is known as psychedelic therapy in which high doses of the drug are administered only one or two times and the goal here is to help the patient reach an ecstatic or mystical peak experience. In this case, the patient spends most of his or her time lying down with their eyes closed, listening to relaxing music. However, before and after this experience, the patient needs to have a psychotherapy session. In both methods, a therapist is present at all times to comfort the participant and help them through this experience. Almost all of the research on psychedelics was conducted using the second method, and the depth and intensity of the peak experience was correlated with the positive outcomes in many cases. Although studies from 1950s and 60s do not meet the scientific criteria required nowadays, the more recent ones use state-of-the-art experimental design and procedures. For example, a 2016 randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trial conducted by a group of scientists from John Hopkins University studied the effect of psilocybin on the anxiety and depression of terminally ill cancer patients. Psilocybin is a naturally occurring psychoactive compound found in a large group of mushrooms known as psilocybin mushrooms. The effect of psilocybin are similar to that of LSD, namely euphoria, hallucinations, and altered perception. John Hopkins researchers administered various doses of the drug lasting 8 hours in a safe and fully monitored environment. Interestingly, they found out that 92% of the patients had complete remission or at least a 50% reduction in their depressive symptoms. A similar response was also observed for anxiety levels in more than 75% of the participants. After follow-ups, they realized that the positive effects were sustained for at least 5 weeks and no adverse effects was reported by any of the patients. 
As another example, a 2012 meta-analysis which included six randomized double-blind studies of LSD and alcoholism between 1966 and 1970 concluded that LSD is in fact effective in controlling problematic drinking behaviors. A total of 536 adults were examined in these trials which utilized standard questionnaires to compare the alcohol abuse outcomes before and after the therapy. When magic mushrooms are ingested, the liver quickly metabolizes psilocybin into psilocin, which is a partial agonist of several serotonin receptors known as 5-hydroxytryptamine or 5-HT receptors. In simple terms, this means that psilocin mimics serotonin and binds to serotonin receptors on our brain cells. LSD also binds to the same group of receptors. There are 14 known subtypes of 5-HT receptors and psychedelics bind to each one of them with different affinities. This binding subsequently modulates the excitatory or inhibitory activity of the neurons which leads to the overall effects of psychedelics. On a broader scale, they demonstrated that LSD substantially increases the blood flow and the resting state functional connectivity of the visual cortex, which is the area in the brain responsible for receiving, integrating and processing visual information. Functional connectivity describes the connection between different brain regions that share functional properties. Increased functional connectivity in the visual cortex translates into instability in that region, which in turn causes the visual cortex to behave as if there is an external input, when in fact there is none. Altogether, these results could explain the underlying basis for seeing with eyes shut under the effects of psychedelics. While LSD increases the functional connectivity in the visual cortex, it concurrently reduces the functional connectivity in other areas of the brain, namely the default mode network or DMN. DMN is a network of large brain regions that are collectively responsible for the sense of self. The disintegration of well-established brain networks such as DMN is believed to be the cause of ego dissolution and the subsequent altered experience of self-identity and meaning of life. The fascinating part of psychedelic studies is the fact that only one or two doses produce such long-lasting effects. Okay, I know all of this sounds great, but there are a lot of caveats here. First. These are carefully controlled studies in which patients are vetted for pre-existing psychiatric conditions. Also, the sample sizes of the discussed studies are still very small. A lot more interdisciplinary investigation is required for the scientific community to reach a consensus about the true efficacy of psychedelics. So please do not try these at home. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe and we will see you soon. Thank you.